Welcome back to the IT blog. Today we're going to talk about master's degrees in cybersecurity. Do companies care at all? What's the difference between certificates, master's degrees, what type of knowledge do you get? And I just achieved my master's degree. Do I regret it? Today we're going to talk about it. I really broke it down to two things for myself as to why I wanted to achieve this. The first is personal. At the time, I always thought people who got master's degrees were just like, so uh, intelligent that I, I myself was no way able to do it. Uh, now, as an adult, I, I looked at that and said, you know what, I, I personally want to uh, take on this challenge and complete it and, and for myself, really, on a personal note, so that I can kind of just hit that check mark to see that I something that I once thought was impossible, Give it a few years and with enough uh, confidence in yourself and your ability to do something and overcome a challenge. And I achieved it, right? It was a really hard two years and it was uh, really fulfilling. This whole process is extremely fulfilling. So that, that hits the, the why for the, the personal side. Uh, from a career perspective, what I was really looking for was something that I couldn't get in certificates. A comprehensive education on cybersecurity as a whole. And that's what I was looking to achieve in this degree. Looking for a program that will help me as a, as a cybersecurity professional, help organizations build a cybersecurity program and understand where they need to improve and how to implement. How I decided to select the program was based on a few factors. One is uh, for sure was has to be online. Just because in my area where I live, there isn't a good program in relation to cybersecurity really not even an IT, um, I would say. So uh, because of that, it needed to be somewhere out of state. I wasn't planning on moving just to get this degree. So I decided, you know what, it has to be online. The other portion of it was, it, I wanted to make sure it was a good accredited school, meaning when I mentioned that I went to this, the school relating to the, the, the program, I wanted it to have some type of weight so that when the, not only am I gaining the knowledge of the information, I'm also getting the weight of the school. The last but not least, the third factor was essentially the program. Uh, I wanted it to be comprehensive. I didn't want it to be just a specific area. I didn't want it to be information security analyst or forensics type of stuff or defensive or offensive or malware development and research. I, I didn't just want one area. And I researched the top online schools and University of Arizona at the time was, I think was number one cybersecurity program. Right now it's ranked four as online programs, the best in 2023. So, uh, so it, it still continues to have that reputation of great online experience. It's important because if, if if you have an online school and then you have a great program, but then they the the management of, of online itself, like the content of the program is great, but the online portion of it, the technology isn't good, then you have a bad experience, right? Outages, you can't access the stuff. The program itself from University of Arizona consisted of uh, two tracks, the information systems track, and then you have the physical systems track. And... Uh, I went down the information systems track, and that's what we're going to be talking about today. Broke it down to four different areas in the information systems track based on the classes that I took. And it's governing, risk and compliance, penetration, uh, well, I guess penetration testing, office and security, uh, prevention and monitoring, and then uh, project management. The GRC side, we're going to be focusing on these courses is risk assessments, risk analysis, risk management, compliance, understanding the different compliance needs, why do they have them, regulatory compliance, all of that. Uh, and then you're gonna be just overseeing the program itself. This is, this is where I kind of think GRC is really like the, the overseeing of, of the cybersecurity program and everything that it touches, like the, the access, how you manage the access, all the process, procedures, and policies are made. Uh, the, the risks associated to the, pro, the, the assets that the program protects, and then compliance, making sure that you're, you're always in compliance regarding to your regulatory environments or requirements, I should say. And in the prevention or monitoring area, this is where I learned, uh, was really interested in uh, cyber threat intelligence and threat modeling. 
Um, the CTI portion of it was really cool. Essentially, you gather information of what's be what's out there, and how to get that info and apply it to a, a control or a. This is where you are proactive in catching a, an attack. Something like you got a sim and you're tuning it, and you are seeing a lot of chatter relating to. Um, in Twitter, right? Say you have an API and you're scraping Twitter and you're catching all stuff related to automotive and you're like a Ford company and you're a, a, a type of security program protecting the, a, a, an automotive company. And you, you kind of keep track of, of the known um, attackers in the in the industry and uh, maybe some trends relating to cyber attacks linking to like your applications, right? And what you do is you you're able to ingest this information and you can build a, a process in which you look over it and you can actually build a report of potential attacks that are currently being worked on, right? Hackers post on Twitter, hackers post on uh, different forums and different access. You can track um, dark websites and stuff like that and, and essentially build out a program that you can proactively catch uh, attacks before they even happen. Right, that was really interesting for me. CTI is really, I think, extremely important um, and something that's not really talked about. Uh, so, and then in this area as well, you have machine learning and threat modeling. Threat modeling is pretty cool. It's pretty much comes up with like, attack vectors. Like, how are people going to attack you? And w based on the threats and from uh, targeting your particular assets, kind of imagine different types of scenarios. Pretty cool. You let your imagination run wild on how th they can actually compromise the system. And then you check out the risk, uh, the, the impact and likelihood of it occurring. And then you apply controls whenever necessary, right? Um, and then machine learning, which is pretty cool because you gather, gather CTI information and you can make predictions. So Office of Security, this is, needless to say, super easy uh, explanation. You hack stuff, right? We did a, a vulnerability scanning, vulnerability reports. We had a penetration testing class where we hack systems. Then we did the capstone was about you hack the system and you report on it. So you do a whole thing. You do like the scanning, you do the scanning report, then you do the, um, the, the, the actual compromise. You compromise the systems. Then you actually submit a penetration testing report and then how to remediate, right? And then finally, project management. Project management essentially covers, I, I did take an elective project management course. But a lot of these, um, the the the, pro the part of the project management was holistically how to manage such big projects, risk assessments, risk management, huge projects. If you're in compliance area and you're doing an audit, you're managing that as a project. A lot of these courses, like maybe 60, 70 percent of the courses, all had a component of management involved. Um, because they, because from a high level, how are you going to manage a program? How are you going to implement a project relating to X, Y, Z? The whole uh, penetration testing is a project. When you hack a site, like, or you you're performing a a, a a paid paid hack, right? You're penetration testing. You're doing that for a customer. It's a project in itself. The areas I enjoy specifically was prevention and monitoring, offensive security, and risk specifically risk in the GRC. <clears throat> the, the impact, likelihood, uh, risk scoring, risk assessment, risk analysis, all of that is extremely important because it is, in my opinion, how you get management, senior management, board of directors to fund your cybersecurity program. You cannot um, just say, we need, it to, we need it to secure this asset. We just need to do it. But why? Well, because, you know, what if we lose it? Oh, well, that's true. Okay, and then they're like, yes, we need to protect it. You come back with a $100,000 uh, a price tag year over year. It's a three-year contract. So that's that's $300,000 you're asking, right? And then the board of directors is like, are you sure you need this? Why why do we need to spend three hundred? Can we go somewhere cheaper? And those are the questions we end up becoming like, uh, as cybersecurity professionals, it's really difficult to answer some of those, right? Because we, we're kind of accustomed to like, it will... We can go, but it, it's not going to be as reliable. It's not going to be as efficient, yada, yada, yada. And you kind of end up getting rejected, right? Or you end up, well, just hire somebody to particularly look at these areas. We can get them to do other stuff. And, and eventually you, you end up not applying the control at all. Um, 
So with the risk section and, and these courses that I really enjoyed was it, it allowed us to break it down in numbers. So you have the asset value and then how much it costs to apply the control. And then you determine the impact. There's formulas and everything. I won't go into it too much now, but you can essentially determine whether the asset's value is worth protecting based on the control cost. And at that point, you're able to say, okay, well, we can, if we invest 50 grand or less, it's worth it. As soon as we get to 75, 80, it's not worth it anymore. Might as well just leave it. So if we can't find an, a control that falls within the $50,000 or less um, uh, budget, then we shouldn't apply the control. We should avoid it. We should transfer the risk. We can do other things. And allowed me to understand or feel better about um, suggesting cybersecurity controls to organizations and saying, hey, you investing into this will definitely save you money. And this is how. And there's a formula. And this is how I came up with the formula. And it's completely controlled. You could say the value of the assets a dollar. Or it could be, hey, a million dollars. So it allows, it kind of allows me to kind of understand from a financial perspective why we apply the controls. And then from a security perspective, why should we why should we implement them at all? The areas in the program that I didn't really enjoy was machine learning. What I didn't like was that we learned R. We didn't learn Python. I understand why though the, the, the machine learning R is really popular in machine learning um, like industry. But I'm a cybersecurity professional. I, I learned more in Python. So it would be really cool to apply my Python skills to this uh, class. I had to learn a whole new program, which like sucked. Right? Part of the prerequisite in this program was Python. I only used it for one class. So that was like not cool either. Um, so it was kind of, I feel like a, I don't know. I feel like it was gatekeeping a little bit with the Python thing, uh, just cause it wasn't, I thought it was gonna be more used like an office of security or something. Um, but machine learning, this one was a really difficult class for me. I had to relearn the program. Um, did still end up doing okay in the class, but I wish it was just Python. Okay, after completing the cybersecurity master's degree at University of Arizona, how do I feel um, now versus when I first started? Well, essentially, I, I'm really, really confident in my understanding, just overall, the whole cybersecurity industry. Uh, there's obviously always a lot more to learn. I just, the program is so rich in information, a lot of hands-on work, a lot of labs, a lot of um, real uh, outside of the box thinking. Funny enough, the most challenging courses and assignments were when the professor gave uh, folks framework to follow. These are the things that they're looking for, but they didn't give you templates or just an understanding of just fill this out and you're done. It was more of, hey, this is what we need. You come up with how you want to deliver that, whether it's diagrams, documents, PDFs, PowerPoints, whatever. Um, and, and it really made you think outside the box and kind of uh, really immersed you in the program. Uh, and, and a lot of the assignments were heavy in that nature. Whole lot of reading, a whole lot of education. And I feel very, very confident leaving this program that I'm, I'm really competent in the field of cybersecurity. During this program, I've experienced some heavily bank audits and heavy compliance related conversations and stuff. And uh, this program really did help me prepare for some of that stuff. Obviously coupled with my already experience leaving this, um, this program, I definitely think I got a whole lot of, of return from my investment here. Um, now, whether or not I, I recommend a master's degree in cybersecurity or particularly this program itself, I, I, I do recommend it if you are aiming to be more of a consultant management executive level uh, person in the field, be the person that's really proficient in the field, a cybersecurity a master's degree is definitely worth it. You will set yourself apart. You, the, 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 especially in this particular program, you're able to put a lot of stuff in your resume you did. Um, and you can really apply if you're already, if you're in an IT job, if you're like an admin and you're getting this master's degree in cybersecurity, you can apply a lot of things and make a massive impact right away after this program and during it. If you're looking to be an executive one day, 
I definitely recommend it. It won't be you get the master's and you become an executive uh, in like a CISO or something like that. Um, but it'll definitely um, help your case when you're looking to hire someone and promote someone within or, or recommend another individual, right? Usually people hire because of, of confidence level. So if we're looking to, so, to fill a role, you want the person that you recommend or the person to fill the role, the, the high level of confidence they're able to achieve the job. You get a degree, always couple it with certs. I promise you, uh, if you have a security plus, some, for example, you have somebody with security plus or a CCNA or CCMPs, and then somebody will couple with a master's degree, they're always going to pick somebody with a master's and a cert. It's always just about you trying to compete with the person next to you and try to get that job. So the more credentials you're able to stack on your favor, the better. So what do I expect uh, moving forward with this degree? So with the knowledge that I have now, uh, I'm really looking um, towards like the consulting side, really just the organization I work for now, apply some of the, the program knowledge that, I, that I've learned and I'm experiencing now and, and know in the past. And coupled with the experience I had in the past, with the new knowledge I have, I want to apply more program-related items with the technical. So governing risk and compliance, coupled with the technical, how to implement it, definitely something I'm interested in. Facing those challenges on the business side, one thing I'm really excited to do is how do you convince organizations to invest in cybersecurity to answer the big question of, are we secure? Uh, it was two years of gruesome study uh, to get this master's degree. So I'm, I'm sitting back and, and uh, enjoying this uh, success and uh, seeing what I want to do next and moving forward. So I uh, hope you uh, value this uh, video. Th this was really inside knowledge of somebody who completed the cybersecurity a master's degree program, giving you some insight on how I feel after, right? Uh, because before I joined the program, I didn't see a whole lot of people uh, post videos on it. Um, there was like one or two that I saw, there were individuals that were already, they, they were getting a degree in cybersecurity, not necessarily a master's degree. So I decided to kind of fill that here when I was done. I'm already, when I'm finished with this program, it'll be a great video to post. But anyways, I really, hopefully you value uh, this uh, content. And um, if so, like, share, and subscribe. I really appreciate it. Until next time, peace.